Welcome to another edition of Chess Chat, a program brought to you live from the Rollstone Bank and Trust Studio at Fitchburg Access Television. I am George Marijanian, Program Director of the Wachusett Chess Club at Fitchburg State University. This club, the second oldest chess club in Massachusetts, meets every Wednesday evening from 6.30 to 10.30 in the McKay Campus building at the university. And with me for this episode of Chess Chat is once again our award-winning director, Darren Dame of Fitchburg, recipient of FATV's prestigious Boulder Award in 2009, and now in his 17th consecutive year as director of Chess Chat. He's assisted in the control room and also on camera by fellow resident and longtime Watchers Chess Club member, Brian Bigelow. And sitting to my right is my colleague, longtime associate, chess author, chess photographer, Wachusa Chess Club statistician, my co-host, Dave Kucher of Westminster. Hello, Dave. Hey, George. Well, Dave, for this episode of Chess Chat, we have the honor and privilege of having a very famous chess player. Famous in my in my esteem, in my in my, in my opinion, he's a former Wachusett Chess Club champion, co-champion from 1983, 40 years ago, and he's with us today. And it's he's none other than Tom Wiedemann. Tom Wiedemann, who is sitting now on our set, who's who's, who's blessed us by his appearance <laughs> on, on this chess chat. He's here because he is come back from California where he lives and it, it is playing he's been playing this summer at the Wachusett Chess Club at Fitchburg State University and he just won the last tournament we conducted at the club the, the Robert Forty Memorial mm -hmm. yep. which was held in the honor of a club champion Robert Forty who won the club championship in 1964 so Tom Wiedemann we're going to actually have you tell our viewers, our chess chat viewers, a little something about yourself. Tell us actually who you are, <laughs> well, how did you get involved in chess, when did you learn, who taught you, et cetera, et cetera. What can you tell our viewers? Well, I, uh, I attended uh, uh, St. Bernard's High School in the, in the late 70s, and we had a chess team uh, which competed in a, in a league which you ran um, the North Central years ago. Uh, uh, Worcester County's uh, uh, Scholastic Chess League, yes. And, uh, and that's where I learned to play. Um, I had friends uh, on the team um, that, that helped, helped me learn the game. Uh, you helped me learn the game a great deal. A number of other players from the Ch Wachusett Chess Club uh, did as well. Um, and so I, I, I grew up loving chess as a teenager. Um, I ended up going to, uh, I stayed local at, for, for college. I went to Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Um, played chess for them as well and the Pan Ams and things like that. Right. Um, eventually got my degree in physics, went, uh, then finally moved to uh, the West Coast where I was a graduate student and, and received my PhD in physics. Um, all the time, still playing chess. Um, right. and, uh, yeah, so I mean, uh, I've never really gotten away from it. Uh, well, f except for a brief period uh, that I could tell you about in the in the ninety in the late nineties, early two thousands. Yes. Um, where um, so uh, chess is a, a a great a great game for um, for competing. Uh, it's not great for making money unless you are a, the top ten in the world or something yes. like that. Um, but I, I, I actually started taking up another game, uh, which was poker, um, uh -huh. and that was considerably more lucrative than, than chess was. So I stepped away from chess for maybe 10 or 12 years, and, and also away from physics. I was no longer uh, teaching physics for, for that period of time as well, and I, so I played poker for uh, 10 or 12 years and you for, were for a living. A living yes. playing ch poker. Yes, that's, that's right, amazing. yeah. And you weren't the only chess player doing that. Were there no, other there, chess there, players who yes, quit chess? There, there's quite a, quite a large number, actually. But there's something about chess as a feeder. In, well, part of it is that all, all chess players secretly wish they could make a living playing right. chess. Right. And, and so, okay. so when they find another game that they can make a living at, maybe they gravitate toward it. Uh, but there's also analytical skills in chess that, that, yes. that really that play well into, into poker. Um, and so I have known many very good chess players that have gone into it and been successful in poker. Okay. Uh, you mentioned earlier Dan Harrington, who's from this area. Massachusetts, um, right? Was a Massachusetts he, state He was champion. actually a, a world champion um, Poke, uh, poker, poker player. Poker player. Um, right. and, and there's quite a few others. Um, uh, but um, 
that lasted for a while, but you know, uh, after a while, it becomes a job, right. <laughs> and it's yeah. not an easy job. It's a job in which, you know, one week you've you've won the equivalent of a Ferrari, and then the next week you've lost the equivalent <laughs> of a Ferrari, wow. and so, and so it's a it's it's a hard it's a hard thing to 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 wrap your brain around it, that there's all this variance that it go, it's, it's not just like you take a paycheck home every day, right, um, and. You know, so it's it's something that it, you can tire of, and I did tire of it. And you and, returned and, to chess. I, I returned to chess as my game. I returned to uh, uh, physics as my profession. Mm -hmm. So okay, now you became act again active again in California playing chess. Right. Yeah. So and you you won? Did you win win the state championship? Or in California? Yeah, or, or not in California. Else. Yeah, I went you to, somewhere else. Yeah. So, bef <laughs> where, where, what state did you go to, to win the state <laughs> well, championship somewhere else? Well, before, bef actually, before poker came along, I, I had, I had land, I had finished my PhD and, and landed a job in Hawaii, uh -huh. and and moved to Hawaii, um, and uh, checked out the chess scene there, and it wasn't quite like a big fish in a little pond. There were some good players there, but uh, it was a place where I could be competitive. And as, as luck would have it, I, in the first year I was there, I did win the state championship. Okay. And what year was that? 1993. 93. But prior to 1993, <laughs> you had the opportunity to play a former world chess champion. That's did correct. You not? I did, yes. And you, you told Dave and me that you actually played world champion Michal Tal. Yes, uh, Tal is, has always been my my idol, um, and we and we have a photo of you playing oh. world champion Tal. Our Darren Dame, our director, has a photo. This is actually from the actual simultaneous I, exhibition. I'm the one in the blue shirt, by You're the way. The guy in the blue shirt on the right, exactly. <laughs> Although I don't look that young anymore, unfortunately. But Where was this played? Or this when this was, was this in played? the Los Angeles area in uh, 1988. Okay. Um, I was still a graduate student at the time, and I was playing in a tournament down there. But Tall had been in the was in the area and, and gave a simul, and I'd never, I never played in any simuls. Uh, but this one was so special. I mean, I had to. I had I mean, to he's play. He's a legend. I mean, he, Tal, Tal was a legend. Absolutely, my idol, my chess idol for all. This, and I had always fantasized playing against Tall. I had always. And there was a, uh, actually a score sheet. The score of the sheet, game yep, with his signature yeah. and everything. You're at your your score sheet. Yep, yes, my score sheet. And and he, you know, I'd always sort of fantasized playing against him, and that we would have this wild and crazy game because I always really love tactics, and and he's like the the, the wizard of. Right. You know, the Wizard of Riga. Of Riga, yeah. He's known as the Wizard because he was Latvian. And, and so I, I always imagined, I always imagined that we'd have the wildest game. And in that game, if you uh, go through the score, it's we trade down all our pieces very quickly and play a rook and pawn ending. <laughs> Fortunately, which, which you won. Which I, I did oh, win. Wow. I, I, uh, to be fair, that's pretty much the only way I was going to. If it became tactical, I was not going to win. Uh, and and one advantage you have when you're playing. The other side of the simul, when you're yes. one of the many, right. you can calculate, especially in long rook and pawn endings, you can calculate many moves down right. uh, where he comes around and has to make the first move yes. that comes to his head. Yes. So, right. make a quick so I had a very big advantage in that regard. Right. So, okay. um, but but still, I get to say that I won a game against that him. Must so. have been, that was against a great thrill. former world champion. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. And okay. I think that was the same year he won the World Blitz as well. Yes. If I'm not in mistaken. St. John, New Brunswick, yeah. in Canada, yeah. he came, that, uh, actually, it was January, February, he won the World Blitz Championship uh, yeah. in, in 1988. Yeah. So that it was a great thrill for it you. It really was. And, and I, I didn't even expect to have those pictures. A, a, a sort yeah. of a friend of a friend took those pictures and, and ended up mailing them to me afterwards. I was, I was completely shocked that, that, there were, that there were photos of the... Of the uh, well, I'm glad you sent it the, and that we could share it with our Just Jab viewers. Yeah, this, I, I'm, I'm, glad you, I'm glad I could show it to you. Okay. Now, I'd like to get actually to the game or uh, to the tournament you played in recently at the club, the Robert Forty Memorial, uh -huh. beca because uh, you won that. But you're going to present to us not a game from that tournament. You found a game that you played, let's see, 45 years ago? 45 years ago, yeah. 1978, when yes. you were playing at the Washington Chess Club, when it was that's meeting right. at the Wimes, it was the Fitchburg YMC back in the 70s. Yes. Yeah. That's right. It was, uh, I think this was the, this is the Washington Ch uh, Chess Club Fall Swiss. It was yes, held in exactly, fall. exactly right, yes. Okay. And this was the last round of The, the last first. round of this tournament from 1978, yes. November. I was uh, 16 years old. 16 years uh, old. Senior in high school. Well, you were a senior. You were wow. in your senior year. Uh, you were graduating uh, the following year, 79. That's right. St. Bernard's High School. So, in this game, you played against George Putika. Yes. Who, who was a longtime uh, player at the Washington Chess Club. Yep. He, uh, he, grew, he grew up in Gardner, but lived many years in Westminster, where you live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But George Putika was a longtime yep. member of the Washington Chess Club. 
So George had white against you in, in this game from that tournament That's right. at the Washington Chess Club. So what did George Pudica play, Dave, in he that game? with E4. Okay, let's see E4 played. The most popular opening yes. move. Very, very popular, along with the D4, of course. Yeah. yeah. So what did you do in response to George Pudica's E4? So back in the day, and I've since discarded this a long time ago, oh, really? I played Sicilian defense, C5. Okay, C5. Yeah, and, and Dave and I have presented many Sicilian I'm sure, defenses I'm sure, on, yeah. on chess chat. Okay, how did George Pudica continue? Second move. Again, the most popular second move, knight F3. It is? Covering okay. D4, preparing D4. Yeah. All right. Now, what did you do? Also, the, the most common move in the Sicilian, D6, and this is the second move. And by the way, this is what Fisher liked. When Fisher yes. played the Sicilian That's defense, right. this is how he would play the yes. Sicilian defense with D6 on the second right. move. That's right. Okay. Now, Pudica's next move was probably a, sort of a, a, unusual. Well, yeah. different. Let's put yeah, it this it's, way. It's, it's, different. Not, it's not very common. It's not common. Move. Yeah. What is the usual move here? I mean, what is the most commonly I mean, played typically move? Typically, D4 is what gets played. Yes, that's, that's the, the most common. the reason the knight was brought out. Right. But George didn't do that, no, right? No, he played With bishop the... C4. Well, he develops another piece. Right. Okay. Which is reasonable. Yeah. Not, not a mistake. Right, it, right. It, It's just different. Yeah. Okay. So what did you do in response to bishop C4? I just chose to develop a piece. Okay. Now, uh, he used an attack. Attacking a pawn on E4. Yeah. Okay. So now it's Boudicca's move. What does he do? So he guards the pawn by... Pushing the pawn to d3. Right. Now he could have defended actually with the knight. With the knight. To he, could C3, have, he could have sure. defended yeah. that also with the knight. Get another piece of the play and, yep. and defend at the same time. But he chose to play d3. Okay. So now it's your move. What did you do here? Um, now I, I, I chose to, to play e6. To um, uh, it, it does cut off the bishop, but yes. my plan is to actually bring it to the wing right. anyway. It does temporarily shut in that light square bishop. That's right. Yeah. By playing e6. All right. What does Pudico do now on his move? He develops his bishop, queen's bishop to g5, pinning the knight. Okay, knight's pinned. Okay, so Tom, what did you do now in response I, to this? I brought the knight here, also helping to defend that knight. Um, okay. I could have broken the, the pin yes. with bishop to e7, probably a little more uh, correct, but right. this, this, this works. This, this works, works fine. fine. Looks good. Yeah. good. All right, it's uh, Pudica's next move. What does he do? So now he plays knight to c3. All right. He's got now four pieces developed here, yeah. yep. and black has only two pieces developed right That's now. That's right. And okay. I'm not, I'm not going to develop one here either. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. Right, so what uh, do you do? I play a6. Yep. Now, that's actually, by playing a6, should sig signal to white what your plan is. Right. I want to expand on, yes. the, uh, on the king. You want actually, your plan is to play b5. Exactly. Attack the bishop. Right. Yep. Okay. That's right. Now and gain some space. Gain yeah. some space and be able to and develop, develop the ice square on, yeah. b, on the b7 square. That's right. Now. What Pudica did next, I believe, he could have stopped that b5 yes. next move right, if he had played a4, right? That's right. A4, yeah. a4 looks like a very good that, move. That's definitely what he should have played. He should, he should have played a4, but he didn't play a4. No. So what did George do instead of a4? He played a3, I think just with the thought of having a retreat. Right. Oh, square having a retreat. So square. if the bishop is under attack, it can retreat. Yeah. 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 Okay. So what did you do? You carried out I, your plan. I, I obliged. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I obliged him to he move. He attacked the bishop, and yeah. now the bishop is forced to move to save itself. Yeah. So he does move it back to the now open a2 square. Okay. Right. All right. So it's now now black stands probably a little bit better. Yeah. Because yeah. because of the because of the space advantage. Yeah. Exactly. All right. I've got my bishop developed finally. Bishop b7 played. Okay. All right. It is now Pudica's next move. What does he do? So he finally ah. gets around the castling. And this is on move 10. So he's move castling. Nine. Oh, nine. Move 9. Okay, yeah. this is move 9. He castles on move 9. All right, what do you do, Tom? In I, I kick the bishop. Okay. Yeah, you want. The, you I want him to make a decision. Yeah, make a decision. Do you either take the knight or you, or right. you retreat? Or retreat. Right. Right. Or retreat. So what did uh, George decide to do? So he retreats to h4, so he keeps the pin he keeps on. Keeps the that pin knight. on. Okay. All right, so it's now your move, Tom. Okay, so rather than continuing to expose both sides, right. yes. <laughs> I decide, to, I decide yes. to break the pin with bishop to e7. Right, okay, bishop e7 is your move. It is now Pudica's next move. Yeah. What does he do now? So he develops the rook to e1, pointing right. right at black's king. Yeah, because the rook has no future staying on f1. Yep. I mean, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it would be very passive just staying yep. there. Okay, it is now Tom's move. What do you do, Tom, in response to this? Uh, now, now I decide. Now I decide to actually start kicking things. Uh -huh. G5. And that, when I was playing over the game, that surprised me a little because right really? now 
No. Yeah, you're you're king, you're not going to castle kingside, no. right? No, when right. you do something like this, yeah. you, you, you you weaken your, yeah. your kingside. It's, it's hard for him to break all, even with the queenside pawns ex, uh, expanded out so far, it's hard to break through the queenside. Right. So my plan is to definitely hide on the queenside right. and, and storm the kingside. Yep. All right, so he has to move that bishop yeah, to save it. Really and he has, has only, only one, one move. Place. Bishop to g3. That was forced. That's a forced move. Yep. Bishop g3. All right, what are you going to do now? So his bishop really has nowhere to go, and I'm 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 looking to make these pawns more mobile. So I'm, I go here to, to to basically eliminate, try to eliminate this. You dark want to eliminate bishop. that dark, the uh, dark red bishop. Okay, that's right. All right. Is what does uh, George do now on his move? So now he brings the knight over to e2, uh -huh. so he could recapture. If, so right. and not have to weaken his pawn. Double pawn. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So the knight is able to to recapture if there's a recapture a capture here. Yeah. yeah. What did you do? I think it's time to get my king out of the center, oh. so I, I, I bring my queen up here. This is also a very good diagonal, as yes. it turns out. Um, That's a nice so, diagonal to be on. Uh, right. This allows me to this, this allows me to freeze me up to be able to castle queenside. Okay, it's now Pudik's next move. Yeah, so he plays. I'm not Ooh. clear as to what, what that's all about. I, but. Yeah, what is that? I think that I think the intention was to be able to retreat his bishop if I don't ah. take it. It uh -oh. gives him an escape. Yeah, the, the back to a, a, h2. Yeah, but it's a very weak move. I mean, it, it really he, put, he, paints a target on his king. Um, he, he should not be doing that. Yeah, that was that was his first real bad move of the game. I mean, up to this point, yeah. ne neither the evaluation for neither side was very high. It was never more than about a, about one one point. Okay. Um, but this one brings it down for him. All right. All right. So, so what are you doing in response well, to... I definitely don't want to allow him to move his bishop back, so yeah. I take it off. You take the bishop off. Knight takes g3. Okay. And that's gone. And, of course, uh, George retakes with the knight. The knight that he put on e2. Yeah. Right. That was yeah. the whole purpose of bringing the knight to e2 yeah. to recapture that way. And uh, now I make a, a, a rather bad move, actually. Okay. Um, wow. It, it, tur it, it turns out... Yes. So, I mean, I, I didn't know this at the time. I'm, I was yeah. maybe a... 1600 player or something but 16 years old man. yeah That's and, right. and uh and it turns out that so these pawns are now mobile i need yeah. to push this immediately yeah, but, I, but 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 of course the principle is don't start doing that until your king's safe, castle safe, is safe, yeah. safe. Yeah. so on principle this seems like the right move it was castles and we have we have to say too that in the Sicilian, it's very rare that, that castle black long. castles on the queen side. <laughs> exactly, right. yeah. Uh, I mean, but the reason this is wrong is because this allows white to blockade these now. That's right. He could. So white actually, in response to your queen side castling, Can could have gone to, with the knight to h5. And yeah. equalize. Equalize. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's significantly behind at this point. He's down like two points or something if I play this and then castle. Yeah. Because so now he, I've, I've, I've got mobile so pawns. He could, so he could have stunted your advance on the king's side. That's right. On that his next eight. move, right. Right. So, um, so, so what you're saying is instead of casting, you probably could have h5 put right h5. Right h5. Away. Yeah. h5 right, put right, h5 right, h5 right away. h5 right away. Yes, exactly. Right. So yeah. that was the move that should have That should have been, yeah, and then, and then g4 is very strong, and then I, and okay. then I can castle, and I can do everything right. I want to do. But right. castling, right. for, right. it's so funny, you, so safety first yes, in this right. case is not the right idea. Right. Yeah, <laughs> but then George misses his chance, right? So right here, he, he could have played that, but he that by playing that. Presses it all together and plays c3. He plays c3, right. Okay, now what are you thinking about? I'm not going to give him another chance. Right. <laughs> you play H5. H5, right. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. So now it's your move after H5. No, it's oh, no, his move. move. Yeah. It's his move. So what does uh, Pudica do now? Basically, he decides to start trying to attack on the queen side with B4, open things up. Yeah. Yeah. Can. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's but, clear, clearly a race that White's not going to win. Uh, yeah. Because, because the, it's going much slower than these pawns are coming down on the on the king side. But okay. But it's really his own. It's, it seems like one of his few hopes. I mean, it's right. hard to hunker down now that now that this well, has right happened. Well, now it's very clear that White is on the defensive. Yeah. White right. is now the defender. Yeah. He could try black. running his king away. Actually. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah, I've seen that happen before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's your. Okay. So whose move is it now? Black's move. Black's, Black's move. move. Tom's move. Seventeenth um, move. I kind of dither a little bit again here. It seems like a good preparatory move, but really the best move is to play the to pawn immediately. To G4. But, but I've attack but the knight. It never right. seems like it's terrible to put your rooks on right. good no. files. Right. So. No. Okay. So it's now Pudica's uh, move. Yeah. What does so he, do? he continues with. Take. Taking on the. B takes C5. C5 on the queen side. Yeah. 
Okay, now you, you have a variety of yeah, recaptures here. Yeah, three recaptures, yeah. How are you recapturing that pawn on c5? As it turns out, the wrong way. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. You really? I mean, uh, I really should take, in order to keep control yes. of the center, I should take with the pawn. The also, pawn. this clears out d6 for the bishop, which ah, is uh, yeah. important. But instead, I took with the knight, which really allows white oh, to, 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 get, to anchor get, down get, the get center. Down. Uh, yeah. So I, I really but should again. not, I should not have taken with the knight, right. but this is the way I did capture. But again, he misses the he chance. Missed, so he misses, so you're, so you're giving Giving him opportunities right. by, by playing actually. Yes, I am. Well, I mean, <laughs> we, we can't we can't all play like engines. Right, right, yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> so what the, now? So what does George do so now? So rather than you know kicking, well, he what she should have done. Should have yeah. done. He plays the knight to d4. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm not sure what even what he was, was yeah, thinking no, of see, here. Yeah, I don't see. Yeah, the plan well, I'm not sure what, what the, the plan what, was. what the plan is for white here. A four or something. I don't but know. But d four would definitely was a, a much stronger move. Yeah, yeah. We saw. All right, so it's your move now, Tom. What are you doing? All right, now it gets now's when it starts to get fun. Okay, so fun for black. Yeah. For black, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, G4. G4. Okay, so now we have an attack on the pawn on H, H3. Yeah, for he one doesn't. Thing. Yeah, I don't think he has much choice. Yeah, you can't push by. The bishop will simply no, take right, it. And, right. Yeah, and, the and bishop will just simply take the pawn. And you on can't H, sit H, back H, and let the G file get open. Right. So, so, so he takes, takes so he the takes. pawn. All right, so we have H takes G4, and yeah. you are going to take back. How here? Well, I decided to give up a pawn. This gives up a pawn. Yes. Uh, I can take here, and that opens this file. And in fact, in fact, I think the engine prefers that. But really? You're I took with I took with the rook. Okay. Uh, the idea is that now he, this does give up a pawn. Yes. But for an enormous sort of yeah. Advantage. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, so what George and George sees it. He sees how he can win a pawn. Right. Exactly. By doing what? How does right. what does George so do he now? Just takes on h5. Right. Because now that pawn that was protected the, the rook on g4. Is gone. It's gone. And, and the queen now is is attacking the rook on g4. Right. So if I take this knight immediately, then the queen takes the rook. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So so I slide the rook over here, which is now stacks them on this on this file. And now you have a double attack on the knight, threatening and to two win attacks the on the knight, and he okay. can't protect it again. So All right, so after rook h4, what does the pudic do? Withdraws it to. Which, okay, brings it back. G3, and, right. which also is a second defender And, and he's got to be square. there because he has to protect the H1 square, <laughs> otherwise yep. exactly, right. on the H1 square. But of course, that now means that there is there is public enemy number one is the knight on G3, yes. and all he, all focus needs to be to get that knight. Get rid of that knight on G3. That's right. Yeah, and, and uh, he's doing well. Okay, so it's now Black's move, yeah. Tom's move. What does Tom do? So here? I, I, I want to get a, the, the, the black squared bishop involved to attack this. Ah. And so rather than play D, D5 and open up the center, which I yeah. don't want to do, right. okay. I simply play bishop F6 to, to maneuver oh. it to here. To that square, yeah. bishop E5. Okay, it's now Apudica's move. What does he do in response to this? So he plays rook to C1, getting his rook on the same file as the king. I think and hoping, and hoping to open up that file. Well, I also see the rook protects the pawn on c3, but also allows that knight now to maybe go over to f3 yes. and attack the rook. Right, yeah. yeah. Which he couldn't do before because right. the bishop would take the, uh, sure. yep. the yep. pawn take on c3 and fork the rook. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so that was another advantage to going this way yes. is that it pins the knight. It pins, yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so he play, so Pudica plays rook c1. What do you do in response? To I continue rook C1? with my plan. I'm heading for I'm heading for that knight. Yeah. Yes, I want to take yes, that right. knight out of you the picture. You want to eliminate that knight. Okay. Exactly, yeah. What does George do in response here? So he defends the knight. So he comes back. So he defends the knight. So So if I take it, he takes back with the knight and he's again holding h1. That's right, exactly. The right. knight would still be holding the h1 square, protecting that square. Okay. So it's your move. So now the problem is, how yeah. do I how do I continue to harass that knight? Yes. yes. What do I what do I do to get another piece on that knight? And viewers can pause this at home yes. if they want. Exactly. This is a good spot to pause to think yeah. about you what can you can find. Black's move. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. What is Black's move here in this position? So this is a nice move. It's a, yes. Okay. So yeah. I, what I is play the move? bishop takes e4. Aha. The uh, idea, of course, is if pawn takes, then knight takes, and now I've got two pieces on his oh knight. Oh, wow. And right. this diagonal's now open, so this pawn isn't even really protecting the knight. Right. Okay. And again, obviously, you can't take with can't this take knight because it's, because it's mate. mate. So yeah. Exactly. That po bishop is poisoned. It's poisoned, right. So what does George do in response to this? It's probably, probably about the best he can do. He plays d4. And so now, four, now he's forking, forking two other he's pieces. He's now forking two yeah. pieces. So now I've yeah. got pieces hanging all over the place. Right, exactly. All, all three of my minor pieces are under attack. That's right. Um, exactly. right. <laughs> this one's poison, of course, because of the mate. Exactly. Um, but, um, so what are you doing in response to this uh, d4 that he played in forking? Um, I, I, played, I played here. 
this forks the two rooks, but really, I mean, I, I have so many pieces under attack that, that my, my goal is not really to try to win an exchange or anything right. here okay. anyway. So, uh, but it does put another piece on this square so that if pawn takes, queen takes mate. Oh, that's yeah. right. For, <laughs> yeah, for example, yeah. yeah that uh, pawn on d4 cannot take the bishop on right. e5 when he, because it's mate. That's right. It's, it's mate right. on f2. Yeah. So that, that, that exactly. bishop on e5 is poison. Yeah. Can't be this taken. one's poison. It's the, also mate. There's poison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, what does George do in response to this now? How does he continue? Uh, queen to d2. Oh. Yeah, so that the yeah. idea is, I, I think, to help defend this pawn. Um, so if this knight moves. Oh, I see. If he moves the knight, he get yeah. the, the queen would protect the f2 square? Possibly, yeah. Okay. So. So it's your move. What are you doing now, Tom? So now that this bishop's on this diagonal attacking this pawn, I yep. put another piece on this pawn. Ah. We have a bishop on, yeah, <laughs> on, on e4 and the rook right. on, on right. h2. Both. Two pieces. At, you're threatening to take there. On no, g2, just yeah. to take there. On yeah. g2. And then, which, and, yeah. And, yeah. So how does George handle so this? So George blocks the bishop by attacking ah. with the pawn. Okay, so he blocks the attack, yeah. and also an attack attacks the bishop. The bishop. Attacks, the, attacks bishop. the bishop. Right. Okay. It now. does open this diagonal, which protects this bishop now. Right, exactly. Um, yeah. All right. Not so. that it wasn't protected before. Okay, so this one, uh, at this point, uh, I have two pieces hanging. If right. this one falls, this one's also hanging. Right. Um, but uh, I, I, this is the case of a, of a blind squirrel finding an acorn, because um, because I had a, I had a mate. I theme in mind, and I yeah. decided to go for that. It turns out that the move I make has other mate themes that I didn't see. Oh, really? And is is quite a remarkable. Uh, this is probably the, the the one of the best moves I've ever made without realizing it was one of the best moves oh, I've really? ever made. This so was a nice move. I, I just retreat the queen back to d. It unpins this pawn, but yes. it, it retreats the queen back to d to d8. There's oh. actually now a forcing mating sequence that's threatened here if, oh, really? if white doesn't so do something. Mate, uh, if, if white doesn't if white, do something. If, if white doesn't respond yeah. correctly to right, this. Basically, so you're threatening to bring the rook here, right? It's a double check. rook sacrifice, yeah. Oh, so if okay. it were black's move, it would be check, check. knight takes, and then the, then the rook takes, takes, king takes, king takes and then queen check, right? King here. And then knight, a uh, bishop check here. Right. And if he comes here, queen mates here. If he yeah. comes oh, here, oh. knight right. mates here. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you can reset these pieces, yes, yeah. I can. I can. D8, yeah. well, you're the one with the great D8, memory. Uh, D8, yes. D8, yeah. Here, All right, here. So we'll put the here, D8, here, knight. Here. Yep. Knight there. Yep. Okay, this, so, okay, so that's the threat. So, so this is threat. a great move. I mean, so you brought the queen yeah. to, back to D8. Yeah, D8? I, I, this is not, I, I did not know I had this threat. Had, I had another, <laughs> oh, I had really? another had idea in mind. This threat? I had a different idea in mind. Okay. And this is what came to pass, actually. So he grabs. And wins a piece. Bishop yeah, you sac you sacrifice Sac this that piece, yeah. and this one's still attacked. That's right. But I do have that's that, right. Right. I do still have that double rook sacrifice here, but I don't see it. Yeah. Okay. But I do see this. All right. I come here. Well, yeah, wait the, a minute. The now idea is the, the, big the idea is to take the, this file away. You're threatening me, though. Threatening this, mate. On, on F2 threatening with the queen. On F2, yes. Right. So he can't allow that queen to come down to F2. That's right. So what does he do? What does so George rook, do? Rook to F1 to stop that. Yeah, right. And, and, this, yeah. and then I got the, the mating motif that, uh -huh. I, that I actually had in mind when I moved queen D8. This uh -huh. is actually what I had in mind a couple you had of moves this ago. In mind. It was check here. Yeah. So the only, there's only he, one he, move. He's, it's a more forced move. You've got to take he the knight. take. And that's checkmate. And mate. And that's mate. You mate with the bishop. With the bishop, yes. What a great sacrificial game. That's yeah, a nice, it is a fun game. You sacrificed nice that, game. the early bishop on e4. For, yeah, yes. You, yeah. So did, yeah. Was, did you win this tournament? I did. This was, this was the last round. And I, the I walked through the chess cup fall Swiss in November 1978. Yeah. So 78, a great yeah. tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, this was a great game. You picked out a great game to yeah. pre thank present you. to yeah. our chess chat viewers. And I, I thank you for coming and presenting this. As and and we wish you very well. You're going to be playing now. You're going to be heading back to California uh, later this week. What yes, Saturday you say? Saturday, yeah. But you'll be playing hopefully the third round of our current tournament. I do plan to play. Yes, on Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's been an honor being here. Thank Dave you for and I really me. enjoyed this game. I, yeah. I hope our chess chat. I know our chess chat viewers had to enjoy this very instructive game. I mean. I'm, I'm glad I asked you to pick out a great game, a short game. <laughs> Even though it took 45 years to, yeah. <laughs> I haven't played a, a game as good in 45 years, but whatever, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, a, a great game. So we wish you the we wish you all the all the Thank best you, in California. And again, your plan is now to come back. We, come back. I, east. I, I would like to come back, you know, much more often and, and we'll eventually indefinitely. And yeah. we'll, we'll see you across the board.